Hey guys, it's Benefits of a G from MG Tracker here. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about game updates. But first off, I wanted to apologize to you guys in the fact that this video is a little bit over a week since the last video I released. I try and release a video every single week, um, but the video I worked on last week didn't hold up to the standards that I wanted all of our videos to hold up to. So I eventually deleted that one altogether and worked on a new topic, which is the one that I'm talking about now. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the potential impacts that a dev Q&A and game updates have to the economy and what you should be looking for as a merchant or just as a player and how you should interact with these changes. So before I go over some charts, um, the first thing I wanted to bring up is if you watched my last video or one of my previous videos on the different types of merchants, you would have learned that Paying attention to Q&As is one of the fundamental keys to success as a merchant because one of the things you want to do, or at least one of the tools you want to have under your skill set, is being able to predict price changes before they happen. So obviously dev, dev Q&As would be the key factor for predicting item changes. Um, I'm not going to talk about Q&As specifically in this video, but rather their impact to the item and then the aftermath. So if you guys look at the upper part of the screen here, you'll notice I have quite a bit of tabs open. And that's because I want to go over a few items to give you guys a real sense that these updates and Q&As do have a real impact to the market and overall economy. So if you want to take yourself seriously as a merchant, this is something not to ignore. So when we go over the first item, it's going to be Monkey Madness 2, which was released on May 5th, 2016. Now with Monkey Madness, they were going to introduce some best-in-slot gear, which were basically Zenite Jewelry. In, in order to obtain Zenite Jewelry, you had to kill Demonic Gorillas. So basically, this was a PBM update. And when you think about a PBM update, there are going to be merchants and the overall community trying to invest in items they believe are going to be useful for killing these, for killing these off. Now, when we look at the Toxic Bloke Pipe, and we look around the same time frame, now keep in mind, um, I'm looking at the yearly time frame, so these dates aren't going to be exactly um, on the date of the release. But if we look previously, um, the price had basically almost skyrocketed to almost a million um, above its original price when this came out. So obviously this had a real impact. And thinking as a player, you have to uh, you have to think at a certain point. Um, if you did miss out on this and didn't invest in this, are you going to continue buying this item at this price? And if so, are you willing to lose money on it when it goes back down? I say that for an obvious reason because most of these items do decrease in value after their initial spike. And so when you're looking at these graphs, when you're trying to flip these, and I've, I've, I've told you before that you want to look at historic lows and highs, but you have to take in consideration the updates themselves and why they might have played a role in the actual price of those items. So if you look at the blowpipe here, we can notice that it was at 3 million, 3.5 million for quite some time, for a few months actually, until it started to decrease quite rapidly um, back to a million loss in value. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And next we have the Dragon Warhammer, which was released on the 21st of January, 2016. Now this was also a PBM update, and people initially thought, I wouldn't say everyone, but a good portion of the community believed that this item was going to be very useful for PvP. Because if we look at this special attack here, it says, The Dragon Warhammer reduces the defense of your opponent by 30% of their current defense level if you hit a if your hit is successful, it increases the damage dealt by 50%. Initially, people believed that this would be great for PKing, but you can't think like the community. If the community says one thing, it doesn't mean that it's a finite reason, or it's not set in stone. Um, for example, if you guys remember when Lynx Titan re released the Kuramja Store video, everyone started to freak out like, holy crap, this is OP. Why is this even in-game? Well, before he ever released that video, he wasn't the only one using it. 
Um, so clearly thinking like the community isn't going to provide any kind of success or give you an edge. You always want to provide yourself. Um, you always want to think for yourself so you guys can give yourself those edges um, all the time. So if we, by just reviewing this special attack, we know that one of the most useful things um, would be to use this on Corporal Beast, which has a very high defense level, and it's one of the most popular NPCs to kill for money. Obviously, the Elijah Spirit Shield is a significant amount of money, even though it's kind of hitting a spotty area right now, it's still a lot of money, and anyone getting that drop is going to make absolute bank. So if we look at the Dragon Warhammer here, um, I don't remember exactly what this price was on release, but I believe it was around 70 or 80-ish mil um, on release, and it was like that for a little bit. But when people started to talk about it in the sense that it wasn't useful for BKing anymore, and people started using it in BKing videos, and it showed to kind of like not live up to their standards, it kind of... Uh, declined quite rapidly and hit I believe um, 40 million this is only showing like 50 million but this isn't going back to the day of release um, so there was a couple of days in between where um, this might have gone down a little bit even further than what it was previously but then people started to quickly realize that you know just like I said it was useful for corporal beast and all of a sudden it started to increase quite rapidly and then now we have our more stable price of around 75-ish to 80-ish mil. Um, so it's kind of flatlined. So that's another update to kind of pay attention to. If an item comes into the game and the community looks at it in one way, is that item useful significantly in another fashion? And if so, do you believe that its current price point should, is undervalued than what it should be in the future when other people start to realize this and the whole community kind of goes on board. So next we have Dragon Spear Change. And this is different from the previous ones in which the previous two were updates to the game, um, introducing new items, whereas this one was a nerf, which is still something you guys should pay attention to for obvious reasons. Now, if you guys didn't know before the change, basically the Dragon Spear was so OP that if you were in multi-way combat and a team came to you with this um, and they all used them, they could all stack up the special attack, which would basically stun you and you couldn't eat, drink, uh, drink prayer potion or teleport. Um, You're basically a sitting duck waiting to die. Uh, so that was, that was a special attack previously to the update, but now with the new update, you can no longer use these special attacks to stack up on, on one another. So if someone's already stunned, another one of your teammates can't come and use their special attack on him while he's stunned to prevent him from unstunning. So basically, now, this gives players the opportunity to drink prayer potions, eat, or teleport, giving them a one-tick immunity after a stun in which they can try and escape. So obviously this is kind of, this is a huge change. Um, the Dragon Spear had a significant use in the PKing community for big clans for this obvious reason. You'd go into deep wilderness, multi-way combat, you'd have 20 of these guys using these special attacks, and your victim virtually can't do anything. They're just, they're just dead, basically. Um, so keep in mind, before I go over the graph though, that this was in discussion prior to this blog coming out. So players already knew that this nerf was coming. So this plays into the whole um, paying attention to Q&As and Reddit posts. Um, if you see the community trying to discuss kind of like nerfing a certain item and the mods are in agreement of this, saying that, you know, yeah, this is OP and we need to make sure that it's not it's not so overpowered and it needs a nerf, then those should be uh, alarm bells going off in your head that this item is more than likely going to lose a significant amount of its original value. So keeping that in mind, we know that this blog was already well known before it came out. Um, so July 28th. 
Okay, so we have here the drop off happened off basically a month before, more than a month before the update um, came into the game. So it was sitting around like 70 ish, 80 ish K. Um, and then all of a sudden, when this was significantly talked about and the mods were in agreement of nerfing this, we can see that it dropped in price significantly way before the update actually happened. Um, by the time it actually came into the game, it, it was already it had already settled to its price point well before well before that. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. If for whatever reason you're holding on to an item, I don't know why you'd hold on to like a hundred dragon spears, but you know other items. If you're if you're investing in an item, you're hoarding some items for a long term investment, and you notice that the community is talking about this being nerfed. And then you see that the J mods are in agreement of this, like say Twitch, um, then this is something that you might want to sell off. But keep in mind, you don't want to you don't want to base those judgments based on you know kind of like a casual. Oh yeah, that, I think that is a little OP. You want to base them off of a strong incentive from the mods to nerf this. Uh, the difference is when they were talking about the dragon spear. This was like, yeah, this is a set in stone. We're nerfing this. This is definitely OP. We're not keeping this anymore. Like the community already knew this was happening for a fact. There was no, there was no judgment on whether or not this wasn't coming. Um, so that's the difference. Speculation versus uh, the J mods actually saying, yeah, this is definitely something that's going to come to the game. Expect it coming soon. Um, in which case, then you would, of course, want to sell it off. Next, we have the POH update. Now, this is a blog that was that was introduced to the public well before the update actually happened. Now, if we scroll down here, we'll actually see when this was introduced. Um, this was around June 17th, but they were already talking about this well before this blog was updated or well before this blog was released to the public. Um, so we have June 17th when there was an official blog on this and then we have the update itself, which was um, August 25th. Okay, so a couple months later. Um, so with this kind of update, this kind of plays the opposite effect of the Dragon Spear change. The Dragon Spear change was a nerf, whereas this update makes the items used for this more useful, more valuable for a certain period of time. Um, you have to realize with these kind of updates, it almost always happens. Almost always. Um, the community sees this update. They see the, the, that this is coming into the game. And then everyone, well, again, I wouldn't say everyone, but a good portion of the community starts to hoard up these items in ant anticipation of this update. Um, and then with that mass movement of players investing in these items they're all artificially inflating the price which is increasing that price of that item and i don't know if people i don't know um, if people are blindly not realizing that that's being artificially inflated or they're just kind of like ignoring it and just kind of enjoying the fact that they've all increased the price um, simultaneously um, i say that because sometimes i see players come in to come into the discord chat very late with these kind of updates for example when raids was updated into the game or before raids was updated like a week or two weeks before players were asking what type of items they should have tried investing in um which is which is way too late by that time it's it's done. I mean, you already missed the mass movement. You already missed the mass inflation of those items. And by investing so close to the actual release date, you're putting yourself at risk for losing money, which I'm going to go over in a little bit. So obviously with construction, um, the two main useful items for this would be oak and mahogany planks. So if we look at mahogany planks, okay, so we have August 25th of when this um, expansion actually came into the game and we have around June when they started talking about this okay so around June we can see that this price started to increase in price we noticed that around May 
um, the, the the mods probably were talking about this a little bit, and then they released that blog, and then all of a sudden it increased in price quite significantly. Um, after it became official that this was going to come into the game, everyone, well, again, not everyone, but a good portion of the community wanted to buy this item, thus artificially inflating the price of this item. And so you have it that this price um, is now much higher than it normally would have been without it. Um, so let's go ahead and back and look at when this was actually released. So we have August 25th. Um, August 25th. Okay, so around August, we can see that for a little bit, the price remained at its price point, but then obviously everyone wanted to start dumping their items, and then the price started to go back down. Um, it took a little bit of time for this to go significantly down in price, because there are a few wealthy players in game that want to use this, um, but again, over time, Obviously, this item is going to start declining in price back to its original price point. Or maybe it's going to stay. Um, maybe this is its new price point. Maybe 2000 is going to be the new stable price of this item as opposed to 1700 But if you've missed the wave of this, in, of this mass hype investment, it's probably not a good idea to invest in this item. Um, once you've already missed this big spike, you've already missed that huge cash cow. Um, it's, I mean, it's already gone. Uh, other than that, your margins are going to be pretty thin. And by that point, you can, you can just start flipping items normally like you normally would um, like every day. Uh, this is, these, these should be like investment type opportunities where you see these massive spikes. Um, you want to be an early bird to these investments. And then once it hits this price, once it hits its peak, then that's usually around the time you want to start selling off a good portion of them, maybe not all of them, um, but closer to the release date, you certainly want to release more of those items. And then once the release date comes, um, if you haven't done so already, then you should be hurrying up to the GE to get rid of them because they're going to go back and back down in price again soon. So next we have Winter Dot. This was a scaling update to the game in which uh, the mods wanted to make fire making a little bit less tedious and just kind of burning logs and a little bit more, I guess you would say, fun um, to train in game. And this one's a little bit harder to predict price changes uh, because we don't know exactly what was going to be released in game, what the loot was going to look like, um, but you can certainly try and if you were to, like one of the first players to play the game like on the first day then you can obviously get a feel for some items that might have lost their value uh, um, but yeah so as we can see there's more of this coming into the game than there is people wanting to buy this and if we look at this uh, yearly time frame we don't even need to look at the uh, the time um, of when this was released in the blog because on our charts we now have it where if you look at the labels, uh, little letters, I guess you would say, there's a little label that um, will tell you what the update was in game uh, for that day. So basically, ever since ever since this was implemented into the charts with all um, dev blog posts, we have them automatically attached to the chart. Um, so... Um, but you can also you can obviously hide them if you don't want to see them. So if it's a little bit too cluttered for you, you can click hide or you can click show them if you want to. And another neat feature is if you want to click on this, it, you can click on it and it'll take you to that exact blog of the update itself. So you can get a little bit more information on that. But back into this item, we can see that when before Winter Dot was released, this was at a stable like like above 2K really. But ever since this update came into the game, um, the price of this has declined significantly, um, very significantly, actually. And now it's at a price point in which it's not even like it's not even worth picking up. Well, I guess if you were a free to play player, you would pick this up because you're kind of like going for any money that you can possibly get. But obviously, this is a massive change and it obviously hurts in the free to play community. So if you had this item stored up, 
you were hoarding it, flipping it, or for whatever reason, obviously you didn't want to hold it on for much longer. And if you saw it to increase decrease in price, um, this is obviously a couple days in between. But if you started to see a decrease in price um, before this, for this date, then obviously this should have been like a little bit of a warning bell for you to get rid of this item and not hold on to it. Uh, so like if you had 20,000 of these and you were trying to flip them, you wouldn't have lost a lot of money from when it goes down. So that's another update to pay attention to. Uh, this is kind of, this is almost like a nerf. I wouldn't say it was a nerf. Um, it wasn't meant to be, but it does certainly hurt the value of this item. So one thing to pay attention to updates would be if there's a loot table for, from that uh, boss or whatever mini game that come into the game, is it a significant amount that it would hurt the value of this item? And finally, we have the Chambers of Zarek update. Uh, this was a much anticipated update to the game uh, uh, for obvious reasons. There were quite a bit of uh, drops from this uh, raid that were definitely that definitely had the community's eyes on them. Uh, for example, the two-handed uh, shield was one of them because it had an impact on the value of the Lies and Spirit shield, which is hitting a spotty area right now. And then obviously the Twisted Bow, which is, at the time of this video, over a billion uh, worth. So if you were to get that drop in raids, then you've made absolute bank. Um, but with this update, again, like all premium updates, so just like Monkey Madness, players are going to want to kind of hoard up items that they believe are going to be most efficient for killing these bosses. Um, so one of these items that turned out to be quite useful was the Aram's robe top. Um, so we have it here that Raids was released on January 25th, and we can see the price has gone up a little bit more than its current than its current value uh, previously. So it was a little, it, it was, it, I remember it wasn't this, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't that price beforehand. Um, but over time, as players started to uh, wanted to kind of like invest in items that were going to be more useful for raids, this obviously would have been something that maybe they would have thought that would have been really useful for um, this kind of update. And then more, and then obviously um, when this update came into the game, when people saw that it was actually useful instead of decreasing in price right away, um, it kind of kept its price point for a little bit um, and then kind of slowly went back down. If you um, if you look at the picture that I use in the screenshot for the YouTube video, you can see here that basically everyone, well, everyone is actually using Void uh, as their gear of choice. So obviously the reason for using Void would be that you would save inventory space for supplies. So then that would make this not as useful as it was for when it was initially in introduced into the game um, and then players learned how to actually um, defeat the raids boss. Uh, and then obviously this is going to kind of go down in price um, because it's not as useful as it was when it was released on update. But opposed to that, and another item that kept its use, if you if you look at this picture here, is the Arcane Spirit Shield. Um, the Arcane Spirit Shield was mainly used for killing Zora. Um, obviously, you want to have a higher DPS so you can kill bosses in a, in a quicker fashion. Um, so you can get more money per hour. So that was mainly used for Zora. But with the introduced introduction of raids, now it's useful as well for raids. Um, so if we look at that, um, if we look at the timely time graph here, um, at one point in time, it hit a pretty significant price point previously. Um, and it was kind of like in the 70 ish mil for a long time. Um, had this little spike, but then it went back down quite rapidly, uh, soon after. Um, and then with the raids update, um, it didn't hit its spike until basically the day of. Um, and then if we look at a closer time frame, we can see that um, on this update, it basically just kind of skyrocketed from that point from that point on. Um, and now it's basically almost like almost 100 million now. So basically getting a significant increase in value. 
Um, so if you were to do raids on day one and you're a wealthy merchant, then obviously maybe this is something that you would want to would have wanted to hoard up, realizing that this is something that would have been very useful in completing raids in a quicker fashion because on day one people were doing raids in like three hours. Um, it was pretty it was pretty bad. Now players are getting it under like thirty minutes to like forty minutes are like the average times now with like max with maxed out players. Um, so obviously this is another item to look at. Um, you have one item that seemingly would have been useful for raids, um, increased in price pretty significantly. Obviously, it didn't keep its price point because Void was the better option for this. Um, and then it's lo it lost its price point a lot sooner than the Arcane Spirit Shield. And I'm not going to go into the fact of whether or not this is going to keep its price or it's going to continue increasing in price or go down in price. That's all up to you guys. Um, but another one, another item I want to go over real quick. Um, didn't actually save it on here. But why don't we look at the Sarah Doman brew? Because, oh, Sarah Doman, Sarah Doman brew. Okay, so obviously with raids, you would have wanted to last as long as possible without dying. Because every time you die, you actually lose some points, which affects your loot reward. So obviously you want to have the most amount of points so you can get the best possible reward. Um, so if we look at this here, if we look at the yearly time frame, we can see that um, at one point in time, this increased in price pretty significantly. Uh, for whatever reason, I guess the community felt like, okay, this is a good time to start investing. Rates is coming up pretty soon. Probably around the time when they started doing more YouTube videos on it. So around the time they started talking about raids a little bit more, it's probably the time that they started, um, people started investing in this. So you can see here that the price point was around like three or four K and then all of a sudden it started to increase in price pretty significantly and it's kind of keeping that price now. Um, so raids and basically updates in general can influence the price of an item either negatively or positively and it's up to you guys to determine whether or not those items are going to be useful in the long run or whether or not that's just kind of like an artificial inflation and that price is going to go down over time seeing as it's not as useful as um, it should be. So another item that was inflated because of raids was the Dragon Fire Shield, but it decreased in price when players realized that it wasn't as useful. Um, so basically artificially inflated. So let's look at this here. Um, so initially it was around 12 million. Then as raids became closer and closer, people started investing it quite heavily. And then all of a sudden it hit like 17 mil. And then after raids was released, it just dropped right back again. So those are two key, key distinctions. When you're making these investments, you have to try and predict whether or not these are going to be long-term uses for these updates. Um, obviously pay attention to Q&As and see if um, like if, if a Q&A or Reddit post is going to impact the price of an item by nerfing it. And then obviously, um, again, if the community is looking at one item and it's not being looked at in another way. So with the Dragon Warhammer, players were looking at it as a PKing item. Was it useful in another fashion? Um, I know this was a long video, guys, but I wanted to give a clear picture as to basically any kind of update that you guys might face. So give you guys that solid foundation. So when these things come into the game, you guys can be a little bit more prepared on how you guys should think about this and how you guys should view it. So real quickly before I go, guys, um, I wanted to showcase our last Old School RuneScape Bond winner from our uh, giveaway from like a month ago. Um, it took a while for me to contact this guy, but we finally got it done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description down below uh, showing a video that shows all the other winners so you guys can look at it if you want to. I mean, it's just kind of like music and me giving them the bonds there's really nothing there like information wise um, but if you guys were looking at the top of the screen you would have noticed this little uh, blue box here 
And it's basically a little poll for you guys. Um, we're releasing a form pretty soon. Um, not yet. We're still working on it. Um, but we want you guys to vote on what you guys want it to look like. Um, so we created a little Google uh, forum poll for you guys in which we showcase some of the different themes for you guys to vote on. Um, obviously, it's a single choice answer, but you guys can definitely vote on what you guys would like to see um, for our forums. This has kind of been something that's been asked about all the time. Um, so we're finally bringing it to you guys, and you guys definitely have the voice to decide what it should be. Um, but that's going to be the end of the video, guys. If you guys like this video, be sure to leave a like down below to show your support. Leave a comment letting me know uh, any kind of videos you guys want to see in the future. Be sure to subscribe. Good luck merching, guys. Until next time.